I would like you introduce you to the work of Leonard Euler. Yeah, that's how you pronounce his name. I will probably pronounce it Euler. Don't hate. Okay, so Leonard Euler was a 18th century Swiss mathematician. You probably know him from previous works such as the pi symbol and the e symbol, things like that. He was a pretty big deal and he still is. He did a lot of really crazy stuff for maths. But more importantly to us, he did a lot of work in graph theory. So more importantly though, he was really into ruining other people's fun. What do I mean by that? Well, let me introduce you to the town of Königsberg. Königsberg is in Perugia. Now, in the uh, in 1735, there wasn't really a lot to do in Perugia. You couldn't just stay in and watch Perugia's Got Talent. So the residents of Königsberg said, OK, let's have a little competition. They used to go out, get drunk, and see if they could walk across bridges. So in Königsberg there was this river and in the river were two islands and connecting all of these islands were seven bridges. And what the residents used to do was start at one place and see if they could walk across all of the bridges. So they'd drunkenly stumble around and get to a point and ultimately get stuck and have a laugh and get even drunker and try and do it all again. So this became quite a cool thing to do in Perugia. It was known as the Seven Bridges Problem. And residents really used to have a fun time doing this, but then Euler came along and decided, I know, let's think about it mathematically, and then came up with a slap-banging answer of no. No, you cannot walk across all these bridges. How did he do it? Well, it was quite simple. First of all, he represented the problem as a graph. He took the islands and use and swap them for nodes. So he said, okay, there's the land masses at the top and the bottom. We have an island in the middle and we have another island over there. And then he took the bridges and represented those as the arcs. So he said, okay, we have a bridge connecting the top here and here. This is this bridge. And then he did the same for all the other bridges. So there's another bridge connecting that island which is connecting there, there is a bridge connecting there, and there is a bridge connecting the two land masses to this island. So that was his representation of the seven bridges problem. And you'll notice this is a graph, a discrete mathematics graph. But then he noticed something about the way that you enter and exit all of these nodes. See, in the problem, he noticed that in order to cross all of these bridges, what needs to happen is you need to be able to enter a landmass via a bridge the exact same number of times you can leave it via another bridge. In other words, he, made, he said that you can't have a scenario where you enter, exit, and then just enter again, because then you can't leave the island. You need to be able to leave the island again once you come into it, even at the end point you're going to have needed to go out of it to come into it again. And then you can finish, otherwise you'd have one more bridge. So he applied this to graphs. He said, if every single node has an even number of arts coming out of it, so you can enter and exit the same amount of times, you can do one of these circular routes on it, crossing every single arc. So... In other words, if every node has an even number of arts coming out of it, you can do this circular tour. But here we have arcs with three bridges, three bridges, three bridges, and five bridges. None of these are even numbers unless I've gone horrifically wrong somewhere. But after he'd ruined everyone's fun, he decided to take this concept and develop a whole new branch of discrete mathematics based around these types of roots going around graphs. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But first, we just need to cement a bit of definitions into you. Definitions about a way that you can travel around a graph. So I've handily drawn out an existing graph here. Now, this isn't a 
connected graph like we saw in the last video. It's just a graph where not all of the nodes are joined by arcs. It's just a normal graph. So what there are different ways that we can move around these nodes. For example, we can move from one node to another node to another node to another node and to another node again. This kind of simple movement between nodes is called a trail. It really doesn't have any limitations on this. An example of a trail in this graph is A, D, so A, D, we could go to E, we could just stop there, that would be a trail. But let's continue, let's go to I, G, E, and then let's go back to D. And then we can end there. So this is a trail. We just move along these nodes. Now notice that we can end, we can go onto a node more than once. We've gone onto E and D twice. Now, what if we apply a restriction where we say we can't go on these nodes twice? Well, then that would be called a path. A path is like a trail with the restriction that you can't go on a node more than once. For example, a path is A. D, E, I, G, but now we can't go back to E, so there should be a H in here, I've totally skipped a H, skipped that, a H, there we go, that's... okay, so G, H, then we'd have to end there because we can't go back to I or G or E, so that's an example of a path, we can't go along into a node more than once. Now what if we wanted to do a trail where we start and finish on the same node? So like if we wanted to just travel around somewhere and then come back to our house maybe. Well then that's called a closed trail. So closed trail. Like a trail this doesn't have the restriction where we have to never go on the same node twice. We can just go wherever we want. So we could go A, D, uh, let's go A, D, C, B, simple one, A, D, C, B. So we've taken a very simple trail around here. But just because we haven't gone on the same node once, it doesn't mean that, just because we haven't gone on the same node more than once, it doesn't mean that we can't. For example, we could go to A and then to D and then back to A again. That would still be a closed trail just because we've started and finished on the same node. So we've gone from A to D to C to B to A to D back to A again. So that's a closed trail. But then if we apply the restriction we did to a path where we can't go on the same node more than once, that is called a cycle. So I've already spelt it wrong. Cycle. That's the most screwed up I've ever seen. So cycle. So that is, like a path, something where we can't go on the same node more than once, but we start and finish on the same node. So an example here is A, D, C, B, A. Another one that we could do is F, I, G, H, E, F. So we can't go on the same node more than once, but we still have to start and finish on the same node. So we do A, do B, C, D, a. So these are the four basic types of routes that we can go around on a graph. You might see some of these things called different things. For example, I've seen, um, I think it was a, a trail defined as a route. So you can say that a route is something where you can press on, the, where you can go on the same node more than once. But mostly these are the strict definitions that you'll come across. So another thing that we can take note of is saying, like in the bridge problem, how many arcs are coming out of each node. This is called the order of the node. So the order of the node is how many arcs are coming out of it. For example, node A has two arcs coming out of it, so its order is two. But node I has four arcs coming out of it, so its order 
is 4, and so on and so forth. Another thing that we can take note of is whether a graph is connected or not. What do I mean by this? Well, this graph at the moment is connected. I can get from any node to any other node by following a trail. I can get from A to G just by going through A, D, E, I, G. But let's say I introduce another node, node J. Now this node isn't connected to any of the others by arcs. Now this graph isn't connected because I can't get from A to J or any other node to J because I don't have any arcs. So that's what a connected graph is. So now we can take all of these concepts of trails, paths, closed trails and cycles and apply them to what Euler created. And he created things called Eulerian graphs. Now Eulerian graphs, see it's a lot easier to call them Eulerian, but no, strictly Eulerian graphs. Now strictly these things are connected graphs which have a closed trail containing every arc precisely once. What do I mean by that? Well, think back to the bridge problem. We wanted to get from one node, from one island, all the way around every single arc to all the other nodes and back to our same island again. That was, th if we could do that, the graph would be called Eulerian. There I go again, Eulerian. So let's draw an example of two graphs, one of them Eulerian and one of them non-Eulerian. So we could have a graph like this. Excuse my silly drawing of nodes. So we could have a graph like this. Now this contains a closed trail. We can go from, let's call this A, B, C, D, and E. We can go A, E, B, C, E, D, A. We can go around all of this graph and finish at the same place. Remember, a closed trail is the thing where we can go all the way around and just start and finish on the same node. It doesn't matter that we cross over E twice, we, as long as we started and finished on the same node. But then this graph with A, B, C and D, A, B, C, D, this isn't an Eulerian graph because we can't get from C all the way back to C again without going across this arc twice. We don't have to travel over any of these arcs twice, but this one we do have to. So this one is Eulerian, and this is non-Eulerian. I hope you can see that, that difference there. So it, as we looked at that bridge problem, it was relatively easy to prove that every node of the Eulerian graph must have an even order. So we, ha we have to have an order where we can enter and exit the node an even number of times. Now Euler proved this and it's a uh, converse which is uh, a lot more difficult to prove where you, uh, you cannot go around a graph if it doesn't. It kind of follows on that that's just logic but again this is maths you kind of have to prove everything to be respected. So what about if we take this closed trail no this closed uh, yeah this closed trail and instead of saying that say can we do a cycle can we can we go on the start and exit no can we can we just go oh I messed it up okay start again can we take this concept of starting and finishing on the same node and going over every arc and change it a little bit. Can we still go over every arc, but start and finish on different nodes? For example, if we go back up to our bridge problem, maybe one of the residents could have gone all the way over every bridge, but just not end up back where he started. Well, Euler proved this too. He said, well, let's, here's an example you might be familiar with. As a kid, you always got given that problem where you have to draw this shape without taking your pen off the paper. Believe it or not, this is a decisions mathematics question. This is a graph. We have 
nodes here. And if only you were like me and didn't go outside as a child and instead studied discrete maths, you could probably tell all of your friends that you know that this is possible because of a property that Euler created. But then again, you'd have no friends. So we can do this. It, it's a little tricky. I mean, yeah, see, I've just failed there. But you can do it. And that's because when we're thinking of going into a node and out of a node an even number of times, that doesn't apply to our start and end node here. We can start on a node, exit it, enter it again, and leave it again, because as long as that is the node where we are going towards the finish, we don't have to come back to it. We can enter a node and just stop, we don't have to exit again, because we don't have to start and finish on the same node. So Euler said that you can do this, you can go across every arc but just finish on different nodes if your graph has precisely two nodes of odd order. So if we look at this graph, this, ha this node has an order of two, this one has an order of four, this one four, this one four, but these two have an order of three. We have precisely two nodes which have an odd order which means that we can start and finish on these nodes. And he called this type of graph semi-Eulerian. And that about sums up Eulerian graphs. You can do a bunch of exercises about this. It's pretty cool to think about, pretty cool to come up with your own examples. I've seen really good questions involving uh, things about having room. I think the math challenge actually had one of these kind of things on it. It had different rooms and different doors connecting the rooms and it said okay can you go through all of the rooms without going through a door twice and that is just this kind of problem this is a semi eulerian this is a graph which you should be able to translate into either eulerian semi eulerian or neither so it's pretty cool um and next time we should go into more things about like bar graphs or planar graphs. So I will see you then.